Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, James Miller. Welcome back to Savvy Broadcasting. I'm so grateful to have you here today. How are you? I am doing well. It has been so long since we've caught up. I can't wait to be on your show, and I'm so honored to, that you allowed me to be oh. to guest today. So thank you. Oh, thank you. We've been friends forever, and I'm so grateful yes. we met. I mean, we were just getting started in the podcasting world, and we were helping each other learn uh, how it all works. Uh, but I'm so <laughs> excited for you because you have your first book out, Life Lessons. You are the expert on your life. And it's a workbook, but it's not like the ordinary workbooks that are out there. There's a whole bunch of self helpy um, type um, help books. Um, but what's interesting is that you're a psychologist. So you're going to go at the deep, deep, you know, help people dig out the onion layers <laughs> of bent up emotions and stuff that block them from living their fullest potential. And today in particular, while talking about your book, we're going to go into deeply what is some of the things that self-sabotage people that keep them from living their full potential? But uh, so just share with the audience who might not be f familiar with some of our past episodes, a little bit about your backstory. Sure. Well, once again, thank you for allowing me to guest today. So as you know, I'm James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I've been in the mental health field for 25 years. There's a really good filter on this Zoom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so with that, I'm just kidding. So but I've, I've had such a great time getting to know so many people. So in my practice, I, like I said, I work for so, with so many people. And when I wanted to make the next iteration of my life, I thought, well, what does that look like? And so I, I was in film and television when I was younger. So I took the entertainment space and then the psychotherapy and then also if you think about it psychotherapy is really just interviewing clients all the time so i was interviewing them put it all together and i've been blessed to have lifeology and so lifeology took off and it's a national radio show um, and so it's, it's really been fantastic and so when i created this book life lessons you are the experts in your life a workbook this is what it looks like i i wanted to do something different you know mm -hmm. there's so many fantastic self-help books out there but and when I'm in struggling in the moment, I don't want to have to read a whole book and mm -hmm. be like, what do I do? Follow these, you know, these 200 pages of something. I'm like, what do I do? So with this book, I broke it into nine different categories, um, 37 different chapters. And so when you're struggling at the moment, you go to this chapter and say, this is what you do. And so that's how the book was created. Yeah, I, I love that. You know what I used to do a long time ago, James, when I was a kid and I'd have a difficult time at, at it and I, I would go back to the Holy Bible and I just uh -huh. didn't and I didn't know what to refer to. So there's this things where you can find online where, well, at the time it wasn't online, but you could go and just pick out like a topic and then they tell you all the scripture that would relate to oh, that topic. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, OK, so this will, this is what <laughs> I need today. Yeah. 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 So this is it's very similar to that. Not yeah, the Bible, yeah. of course. I mean, it's yeah, it's not as mysterious as that. As holy as that. But yeah, but it, it's cool because it's what it does is is it also not only gives you practical tools and techniques. So it's the, each chapter is super short. It's two to three pages. Very doable for anyone who's struggling, even when they're not struggling. So you can either read it front to back or, like I said, pick out which chapter you want. But what it does, and this is how what identifies how you are the expert, is we've all experienced emotions before. So for example, if I'm experiencing grief right now, I'm like, what do I do? So you read the little chapter, it gives you the foundation for what to do. But then this is the cool part is then it asks you in the workbook session section, mm -hmm. when did you feel grief before? And when you felt it before, what did you do that worked for you to help you through it? And what did you do that did not work for you? Mm -hmm. And so when you can think about it in that respect, you already know what to do. So the situation may be different, but the emotions you're exper experiencing, you have felt them before. So you don't need me to tell you what to do. It helps you reflect on what you've done that's worked for you and what to avoid. Void. And that's what makes this book so different because everyone is going to have a different version of how they are the expert in their life. Ooh, I, I love that. And what I'm getting from you, James, is that this is kind of like sitting in the uh, psych, psych office with you and you mm -hmm. being their therapist, even though you're not <laughs> exactly. there. I mean, my, exactly. my friend, yeah, my friend used to tell me who is a psychologist, we don't tell our patients what to do. We lead no. them and guide them no. and they discover on their own what to do Correct. that's best for them. Yeah. yeah. And you know, when I started life, when I started lifeology, it started out as, as I would do like YouTube, YouTube episodes. And so I did like for six months, I did one every single day just to practice my craft. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like the same concept was I would do three minute little life lessons, and then it went into the podcast, and then went to radio. So that's what I do all the time is teach these little things. But the, like I said, the caveat to it now is what now, what, even though I teach them, but now you get to implement the techniques that work for you, I give you the foundation mm -hmm. of how to reframe it, you get to use the things you already know that works for you. And that's why it's, 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 a lot of got a really good press because it's so different and it's yeah. something that people are like oh my gosh I, I forgot I this is what I used to do that was so helpful for me boom you know many years ago we had a guy on who his 
genre was really fitness and health and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm not into all these fads and diets because honestly, every single body's body is different. Yes. So I can't just say, yeah. hey, this is the exact perfect diet or exercise yeah. regimen for you because it's going to be a different recipe for every single person. And this, what you're saying here is really the, the way to approach your problems will be different for every single person, whether it be grief or, or, you know, uh, envy or whatever the sabotage, um, anything, yeah, yes. anything. And, but it's going to be your personal way to work through it. Now, self-sabotage. I mean, this is a big one in, in the realm of being an <laughs> entrepreneur. Um, yes. And now also just, I think an ordinary person, we can often mm -hmm. self-sabotage ourselves. Where do you see this come up when you work with patients the most? And, and, you know, why is it such a big problem actually? Self-sabotage is something obviously we all experience. It's where mm -hmm. self-sabotage really boils down to is our core beliefs. Core beliefs, what they basically is, is something that happened to us when we were kids. Either somebody kept telling us something or a situation happened that was very traumatic for us or very impactful for us. And when it happened, we told ourselves something. And when we told ourselves something, then when we experienced something that was very similar to that or that emotion that we experienced was very similar, we we. we reaffirm that by saying, oh, that must have been true the first time. So I'm stupid. I am ugly. I am fat. I'm worthless. Whatever that might be, we all have something. And so when we were kids, that's really what happens. The, the way that you know what your core belief is, because it may not be very obvious for people, mm -hmm. is if you do something that's silly or that you're embarrassed about, what do you tell yourself right away? So usually there's a phrase. So someone can say, I am stupid, or what is wrong with you, James? You always do that. Wh whatever that phrase mm -hmm. is, that is really your core belief when you feel vulnerable. And most people don't realize that. So everyone right now, think about that. Whenever you do something, really catch that because when you can peel mm -hmm. all the layers away, that is one blind spot you might have that you didn't realize is there. And so that often is a lead in for self-sabotage. So if you're feeling vulnerable, if that, whatever that phrase is, mm -hmm. then you can say, well, how do I feel that in other areas? So that phrase is going to trickle over and meander into mm -hmm. another area of your life. But that's really the core belief that you were taught when you were a kid. Now, the way to change the core belief is just simply once you're aware of it and say, wait a minute, I'm not stupid. I'm not <laughs> ugly. I'm not fat. I'm not whatever. So mm -hmm. when you use logic to say, that doesn't make sense. How, what's the proof? that proves this core belief. Well, there's no mm. proof. So if there's no proof, now I get to reframe that. No, so what is true? Mm. Okay, I am successful, I am kind, I'm loving, I'm gentle, I'm compassionate, I'm you know, rich, whatever you mm. wanna say, you get to fill in the blank. And so the more you practice that, the next time that comes up again, you're like, wait a minute, that's not true. Mm. This is what's true. And that's how you change your core belief by recognizing that small little statement that happens when you're feeling mm. vulnerable or embarrassed. Wow. And what what's really awesome about this is I'm picking up from you that it's just starting to notice and pay attention yes. is the first step. Uh, I remember a number of years ago working with a counselor um, because I kept having bad dating relationships. And mm -hmm. uh, so they had me just journal things. And that was my way to kind of notice my thoughts. Yeah. And, you know, we yes. let them roll around our head and and when you start putting them out on paper, that worked for me, you begin to realize, oh, this keeps coming up. And for me, it was like, everyone just leaves. And I was like, ooh, mm. where did that start? And so yeah. then you begin to peel back and the next time you come across something like this and uh, say a friend is no longer a friend for whatever reason, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. happens in her life that's personally totally not anything to do with you. Yeah. You could say, oh, I'm doing it again. I'm starting to act like the small scared child that scared yes. mommy and daddy are gonna leave, but this isn't about that. Exactly. And the yeah. great thing about externalizing that when people journal is it's, it just slows everything down. And so people, so some people are very auditory learners for journaling. Other people are, excuse me, other people are visual learners for, for journaling and other people are, are, are audible learners. And so what you can do is you literally speak your thoughts aloud, slow them down and just speak them aloud. And as you say it aloud, what happens is, is you, when you speak aloud, our five senses are used to determine our proximity. So when you speak, you actually have to listen to what you're saying. So when you say like, wait a minute, that's not true. So for people who don't like to write, just simply speak aloud. It's the same concept. It's just a different form of learning. And in doing that, you'll actually hear what your core belief is. Wow. You know, that's another, I mean, I think I'm more of a tactile, also listening, mm -hmm. kinest, what you, kinesthetic and auditory. Kinesthetic, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. But I remember... Um, that someone had played back something that I had been saying or something and they played it back for me. And I remember being shocked, like, oh, I said that. It's amazing oh, how sometimes we don't pay attention to what we're saying yeah. and things come out. Yeah. It, it's amazing. Yeah, I could totally. But I wanted to say it. something for, for you, something that's a little bit different. So this is a cool <laughs> little trick that many people don't know. So if you journal, you want to actually write with your opposite hand. So now we're not looking for legibility. We're just <laughs> looking just to be able to access a different side of your brain. So we usually have 
I don't want to say we have we use one more than the other, but sometimes we have more of how we our perception is maybe more logical or more creative. And so you want to use the other hand because as you write, you're going to start to think about the situation slightly different. So you may not be able to read what you write if it's not legible, but you're accessing the different emotional aspect of it, more logical aspect. So as you write, it actually is going to help you think about it slightly different. So it's a little mm -hmm. hack there you can use for those people who do journal, try and write with your other hand and see what comes up for you. That is such great tip. Now, as someone's saying out there, I don't even know where to begin to get a hold of all my emotions. Where do you begin? Because I, I think, honestly, meditation's a good start. But some people, I'm too busy just to sit still and yeah. listen to my thoughts all day long. <laughs> I mean, but it doesn't have to be all day long, actually. Sure, just, no. Yeah. What would be your um, suggestion for someone getting started and getting um, acquainted with their inner thoughts? Well, you know, what the difference is, is when people say I don't have time to meditate. Well, if you think about anything longer than you quote should, well, that's meditating. So if you're anxious, you think about something, oh my gosh, what if this is going to happen? What if this is going to happen? You're actually meditating on it. Meditating is just giving thought and emotion and energy to a thought. And the more you think about it, the more that comes closer to, to your brain, to your thoughts. That's all mm -hmm. you think about. So we all meditate. So some people may say, oh, I, I have to meditate this way or this way. You can do it however you want. You can go for a walk and think about something. You can sit down and think about something. You can do whatever you want. The point is, is you just think about something over and over and over again. Faith and fear ask us to do the same thing. They ask us to focus on this on something that may or may not come true. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid, I'm sure when you were little, little as well, we had uh, the cartoon, the little little devil, little angel that would talk yeah. to the person. This one, this one. Okay, so it's, it's the same thing. Faith and fear ask us to do the same thing. So when you cap capture your thoughts and recognize, I'm thinking about mm -hmm. something that's anxious. Okay, that's not true. Or I can think about well, what if it's, what if this does come true in a healthy way? What if my life isn't this way? So you can do the same thing because they, like I said, they ask us to focus on something that's not yet true. So mm -hmm. when someone thinks about something, it's meditation. So if you find that your thoughts create this energy of anxiety and worry, mm -hmm. and it's more than what you can handle, you're literally meditating. So in psychology, we teach that whatever you think about determines what you feel. What you feel mm -hmm. determines how you respond. So if my response is if I'm like really angry all the time or yelling at people all the time or just just whatever that might be, well, that's connected to my emotions. My emotions are connected to my thoughts. And so the way to answer mm -hmm. your question, what you want to do is if you can't focus on what your thoughts are, look at what your body's doing. If you're tense all the time, well, that mm -hmm. literally means I'm probably anxious or I'm probably mm -hmm. fearful. So you can recognize what your body is, the positioning of your body, how you interact with others. You can then say, okay, I'm aware of this. Now, what would that feeling be? And then that's how you can be aware of what your feeling is. Okay, well, that feeling, I'm feeling what that is. Mm -hmm. What's that linked to? So it's a link to a thought. So what am I thinking about? And so that's how you can enter into each of those portals as far as what you think about, what you feel, what you do. And so that's how people can figure that out for themselves is if they don't know what they're thinking, what am I feeling or what am I doing? And that's all yeah. you have to do. And in that, just simply ask yourself questions. You'll get to that aspect of what am I thinking that's creating this core belief or the self-sabotage that's getting in my way. Wow. I, it's amazing for me because I think, you know, working many years ago with a counselor, they had said, so they kept saying, what are you feeling? I'm like, I don't know. I don't feel anything right now. Annoyed <laughs> right now because I'm talking to you and you keep asking me that. <laughs> But I, I love that you're peeling back the layers because sometimes yeah. you you can't put words to it. But I love yeah. to say, pay attention to what is your body. Is it tense or are you mm -hmm. happy or are you mm -hmm. relaxed? It gives you a starting point um, where yeah. to start. Yeah. And a lot of people that would say, uh, what do you, uh, you know, tell me how you feel. If, if you simply, if you're talking to someone, just simply ask them, what's going on for you right now? Because mm -hmm. people like you who may not be able to feel, but you can give me the data points of, I am thinking about this. So if you put, if you pigeonhole someone into a feeling response and they don't think that way, or they think logically, they're not gonna be able to do that. So don't pigeonhole anybody. Just simply mm -hmm. say, what's going on for you? Tell me what's happening. And they will be able to fill in the blank with either emotions or their thoughts. Wow, you're amazing, James. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's why you've been doing this for so long and so successful. But I want everyone to be able to tackle their hidden emotions, holding them back. How, they get, how can they get a copy of Life Lessons and find out more about you? Oh, thank you so much once again for allowing me to be a guest today. So That's simply good. go to jamesmillerlifeology.com or you can purchase the book Life Lessons. You are the experts of your life on Amazon. Yes. And you have a very, very successful podcast. Where can they listen to all of that? You're also on AMFM 247. You've been there for mm -hmm. years. Uh, you're on loads of AMFM platforms. Share a little bit about your, your, your radio program. Oh, thank you. I'm now, I think at 400 and 15 episodes. It's crazy. I'm mm -hmm. on three times a week. Um, you can listen to me in any of 
any streaming platform. Um, it's archived on, pod, on podcast platforms as well. Just simply, once again, go to jamesmillerlifeology.com or just type in Lifeology and you will see me everywhere and any every platform you can imagine. So I know, right? <laughs> and if you don't see me, then there's, someone's using my trademark. So <laughs> we'll yeah. keep that in mind. <laughs> and if they happen to be in the, I believe you're in the DC area and need a psychologist, yes. are they able to work with you? Well, I'm, I do still fly up there. So I'm currently in Miami right now. I do consult with a lot of people. I do it more virtual now. So um, I'm, I'm in the psychology space, but I'm also in the life mentoring space as well. So Ooh. anyone, anything that people are looking for, I will be right there to help you as much as I can. Awesome, James. You're the best. God bless you. I'm so grateful for all the work you're doing to help people out there. Everyone go to jamesmillerlifeology.com and get a copy of Life Lessons. You are the expert on your life, not anyone else. Thank you, James, for coming to Savvy Broadcasting. Thanks, Christina. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more Savvy episodes and Savvy Biz Tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.